I'm Mike, this is Flashing Badger Painting, and apparently Death Guard aren't in a great place competitively. But they're going to feel the love from us today as I look at some fun and exciting ways to paint Death Guard models. If you're already a collector of Death Guard, then I'm pretty sure this video will excite you. But if you're not down with Nurgle and his various gifts yet, then be sure to still stick around because I'm confident you'll be able to find some tips and tricks to assist you with your painting. I'm going to play around with four different ways to paint Death Guard, but I like to dive straight in. So let's take a look at how I like to paint my Death Guard. One of the first videos I made for the channel was a fun showcase of my Death Guard army and being brand new on YouTube, I was blown away by how many people viewed the video and the support they offered. I'll add links to this video, but today is a great opportunity to talk you through how I like to paint my Plague Marines. I'm starting with a prime of Wraithbone, but over the course of painting the army, I've used white and also Xandru dust, so consider that the exact prime colour isn't the be all and end all. I have quite a light base that I'm starting with, but like a madman, I'm jumping across to using a dark brown and I'm painting this in thin lines in the recessed shadow areas and also along the trim of the armor. This will look pretty messy at first, but over the next few steps, we're gonna cover that transition and it'll start to look good, I promise. If I'm painting a squad, then I will paint each model with the same step before I move to the next color, as this will save me a lot of time. Guillaume and Flesh, Contrast Medium and Vallejo Airbrush Thinner all mixed together in roughly a one third ratio weakens the brown contrast right down. If I don't thin this paint, then I won't have much control at all and it will go on thick and cover everything. Here I can load the brush up and drag it back across the power armor panels, ending and lifting my brush in those recess areas I want to be darker. By doing this, I leave the majority of the paint in this area. Once dry, I can add another coat or two and paint smaller amounts in the darker areas to create that transition. Here you can see how it's looking after a few coats and compare that in your mind to what it would look like if I slapped one thick coat of contrast over the top of all of the armor. Really important though, is you need to consider how much time you actually wanna be investing into each of the models and paint what works for you. In the background, I've been introducing some highlights using Vallejo Off-White and Vallejo Arctic White. I'm layering thin lines along the raised sections of the panels. If this was an important character, I would slow down and really take my time here. But if I'm zooming through squads of infantry, this is how I would paint them. Whichever model you are planning on painting, consider sub-assembly, because if this backpack was attached, then I'd really struggle to reach into the back of the legs and despite the practical advice of Edna Mode, these 41st Millennium Dwellers love capes. I pick out a knee pad and a shoulder pauldron that I'm going to paint in an accent colour instead. Kind of like in the 90s when I wasn't allowed to go out rollerblading unless I had my fluoro orange knee pads on. I mean, skateboarding. Kick flips. Nasdrag yellow down the bottom. Plague bearer flesh in the middle and Militarum green at the top. And then whilst the paints are wet, I push them together a little at the joining areas to blend them from one color to the next. Metallic fancy trim. There is so much of this on chaos models, but the payoff is worth the effort. So I'm taking my time and slowly working around with a thin brush and I'm starting dark with Balthazar gold. There's a few other metallic areas, so to mix it up, I'll use a gunmetal. I really like using a red-brown contrast paint like Fire Slayer over the metal, but decided to use a brown shade this time around. Retributor Gold is the highlight and I'm catching the raised sections with the edge of a thin brush. If the metal trim area is hidden or in a hard to reach place, then I don't bother painting it as no one will see it anyway. Red layers for the cape, starting dark and working my way lighter. While I have the red out, I'm going to paint the eyes of my Plague Marine so that it tells the viewer that he's evil. Apparently being adorned with skull trophies and spikes wasn't enough. No. For the verdigris effect on the gold, you could use a product like Dirty Down Verdigris. 
You could use Games Workshop's technical paint Nihilac Oxide, or like I'm doing here, you can grab a blue contrast paint and then thin it down a little. Here I have Croxagore scales. The colour, not actual Croxagore scales. Can you imagine? And then some of that Nihilac Oxide thinned down as a second blue and adding this in small amounts and there. Quick and easy weathering on your gold or bronze panels. Whilst I have the blues going, I paint that mystical smokestack business that's going on from the top of his tactical school backpack as well. Contrast pink into some of those open wounds and I've forgotten something. Rust. I was working on weathering and I got sidetracked. Orange thinned down and painted into the damaged areas of the armour and across portions of the weapons. You can't call it a plague knife and then sit on the end of your bed of an evening and polish it. Fact. The base colour is a 50-50 mix of corn red and black and once dry I'm applying a thick coat of crackle paint over the top. As this dries there will be gaps in the paint and it will look a little odd if it's black beneath so I prefer this similar earthy colour. Here's a fun fact, my wife just walked in and saw how much I was typing and proclaimed maybe don't talk so much. So without further delay, here's how my model turned out. Here's my pitch on why painting Death Guard is so much fun. If I paint Raven Guard, then great, I'm painting a whole bunch of black. If I'm painting Custodes, then I'm dipping my army in gold and calling it complete. Death Guard though, I'll have bone armor, weathering effects like rusty oranges, green and yellow panels, red and purple tentacles, blue verdigris, and not to mention ooze and blood. They end up as this grim dark Skittles rainbow. Now if you were a space marine embroiled in a brutal campaign of war on the other side of the galaxy isolated from Terra and on the rough side of the Cicatrix Maledictum, how would you still watch your favourite TV shows? And how could you protect yourself from data nerglings seeking to access your personal information? You would probably need Surfshark VPN. Now team, I joke a lot on this channel about not having any sponsors and I promised myself that if ever the opportunity arose that I would only partner myself with products and services that I honestly thought would benefit you. Let me quickly tell you about how Surfshark VPN can benefit you and then we'll get back to painting our plagued ones. When I'm relaxing and painting, I can unlock and watch content that is otherwise blocked in my region. With the tap of a finger, I can switch to a server on the other side of the globe and access the biggest movie catalogue on Netflix. Or when I'm travelling to work on public transport or hiding away in a cafe, I can connect to the Wi-Fi, then connect to my VPN and know that my personal information is secure. If you're ready for a VPN and you'd like to start with an amazing offer that also supports this channel, well you can begin with an exclusive Surfshark deal. If you enter promo code FLASHING, you'll get access to an additional three months free at this link here, and I'll also put a link in the description below. All right, thank you so much for hearing me out. Thank you to Surfshark for becoming the first channel sponsor. And now let's get back to painting some Plague Marines. What's next? Well, as I was painting my Blood Angels Marines, a few of the viewers asked me to attempt Death Guard in the exact same style of Grimdark. I saw Trovari and paint space marines like this, which is where I found the inspiration for my Blood Angels. So I'll include a link below to his channel and these videos so that you can see his amazing work and afford him the credit that he deserves. Starting with a black prime and I've picked out some plucking foam, tweezers and a dark brown paint to begin dabbing across the model. Remember that you don't need to cover the whole model, otherwise we could just paint it. By using the sponge, we leave some areas of the black behind. So much of this hobby is about experimenting and following tutorials so that we can add new tools to our belt. Don't think that you need to create every design and idea from scratch. Be inspired by others and have a go at how they've painted theirs and this will help you develop as a painter. Deathworld Forest is my first green and upon closer inspection you'll see that it's pretty much identical to Death Guard green. So why wouldn't I use that? Because I'm a stubborn child and I refuse to cave to Games Workshop's obvious paint names. Same technique and as I'm working my way around, see how I'm covering slightly less of the model? Don't answer that. I can't actually hear you. 
If there are hard to reach places or if the sponge isn't doing it for me, then I can jump across to the brush and improve my accuracy. Elysian Green is what I've picked out next and it has the added bonus of being difficult to pronounce when I'm recording these voiceovers late at night. Elysian. 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 Check this guy out. That's looking pretty cool. I want to go another colour lighter though. Ochre and camo will be perfect and I'm targeting the middle of the raised sections of the armour where the light will be striking. Back to Balthazar Gold for the trim. You could go brighter but I like the idea of a very weathered and dark looking marine for this style. Good time to mention that if you tinker around with these schemes or create your own, I'd love to see them. I'm over on Instagram as well, so shoot me a message or tag me in your posts. I do see them all and I love to see what you're coming up with. I keep taking these little breaks where I'm just admiring the model, so you can tell I'm pretty chuffed with it. Do you guys do this as well or is it just me? Maybe though, maybe I'm just savouring the view because I'm confident I'm going to ruin it all in another step. More gun metals for extra metallic areas and then I pause to admire it again. What am I doing? I'll stop including all of these rotations now. Agrax Earthshade again to wash the metallic areas and then back to that same Retributor Gold Edge highlight from earlier. Just the oxide technical paint for the weathering on the gold this time. For the gunmetals, this is Harvest Brown from Reaper Minis, as I attempt to rep another paint brand. I've thinned this down into acting like a wash, and then I'm adding this into the areas where water would pool and leave a grime and rust effect. Evil Eyes again, showing my age, as I have to lean in close to see what I'm doing. The brown has dried, so I repeat this step with an orange to give some grime and rust colour variety across the metals. Other rust products have a more realistic look, but I enjoy this almost cartoony colour approach to rust and grime. Pushing around a pink and brown contrast for the tentacles and Nurgle growths. Can you imagine sharing a bed with a dude with legs like this? I can. The base. Same again. Hey, this wasn't a basing guide, but in a minute I'll introduce you to some weathering powders so you can see how I'm staining the model's legs with a red powder effect so they look more like they've been stomping around on the dry cracked earth. Yeah, this was fun. You could go brighter with your greens and use colours like Caliban Green, Warpstone Glow and Moot Green, but I think across a whole army, if my goal is to achieve a Death Guard Grim Dark, I would lean towards these paler, more grotesque colours. Now I've seen blue Death Guard models online a few times, and I know that this breaks the supposed rules about Warhammer lore, but man they look good! And every time I'm getting frustrated painting white and bone coloured armour on my Death Guard, I wonder, I wonder if life could have been a little different if I selected blue. So listen up, here's a story about a little guy who lives in a blue world. And all day and all night, and everything he sees is just blue. Like him, inside and outside. Blue his house, with a blue little window, and a blue Corvette. And everything is blue for him, and himself and everybody around. Cause he ain't got nobody to listen to. He's blue, dubba d dubba d dubba d dubba d dubba d dubba d. Hold up, I just realised, is that song about depression? That's really deep. I wonder what the Crazy Frog ringtone song was about. Speaking of dark, I'm adding a thin line of our original blend mixed with black and following the panel lines around the model. Then for an easy fade, I'm adding some thinner and painting this same colour in the shadow areas of the armour panels and I'm dragging the brush back in the direction that I want to be darker, then lifting so that I leave more of the paint in this area. Short sharp highlights with an off-white mixed with some blue-grey. 
I can't have the same dark gold colour three models in a row. I'm supposed to be branching out, so instead I'll focus on a grimy, weathered metal appearance, which begins with a coat of Rhinox hide on all of the trim and most of the areas that I want to be metal. I say most because I'm going to pick out a few fancy ornaments and paint these with copper for some variety and because instead of scratching and rust, I want these to have a blue verdigris and match the armour. Mournfang Brown is a lighter brown and I'm using this in patchy sections over the top of the darker brown because I don't want the bottom layers of grime to look uniform. I like extra layers of grime for an army like Death Guard. So some of these areas I'm going to add streaking grime and then I'm going to come back in shortly with a bright orange as well. My advice here is to thin the orange right down so that it looks more like a wash in appearance. This way when I apply it into the chips of the armour and across sections of the brown it won't be as intense once it dries and will look like it belongs. Now to make this look like dirty rusty metal, I take a gunmetal like lead belcher and using a short fat brush, I dry brush this across the metal sections in a top down motion so the paint is left behind in small amounts. For me this gives an appearance as though the metal is caked with dirt and rust and every time these areas bump and scratch against things in battle, some of that is chipped away and it exposes the remaining metal beneath. Contrast brown and pink again over a fleshy base coat and this only takes a minute and when I push them together whilst wet it creates a simple but suitable appearance of being unhealthy growths. Thin down contrast blues over the copper areas and I'm confident I've added weathering to every available space on this model. Red eyes, evil. Remember? I want to find a way to visually tie my model to the base. This plague marine has been stomping around on this red cracked earth in the midst of battle, so it makes sense that plenty of dust will have been kicked up. I'm going to use a weathering powder to try and achieve this. This red colour is from MIG, but I also have a couple of other brands in my shoebox, including AK Interactive and Vallejo and they are all great and behave roughly the same. Using an old stiff chunky brush, I'm pushing the powders around the feet and lower legs of the model and aiming to get this into any cracks and places that dust would naturally collect. Once I'm happy with this, I use a pigment fixer like this one from MIG and touch it against the powder areas with a brush. You don't need to drag the brush on the model, simply when you make impact that chemical will spread across the surface. Initially this looks like the powder has faded or altered, but let's have a look at the completed model and see how it looks once it's dried. I've been waiting to paint a blue plague marine for a while now, and I'm glad that I made time to sit down and give it a go. If I was looking to make this into an army, I think I would try a different base design. Maybe frozen ice caps to complement the blues, or even a very dark urban rubble, I think would help the blue jump out even more. On to the fourth and final Plague Marine model now, and what if... What if time was of the essence? Not every member of our community wants to spend multiple hours painting every single model for their army, so today we're going to play around with contrast paints and see what we can achieve when the real goal is to get to the sweet, sweet rolling of dice. A Wraithbone Prime to get us started, because I do like the way the contrast paints react with them, and there's no shortage of grim dark colours, but for my contrast Plague Marine, I'm going to use some lighter colours. This is a mixture of Plague Bearer Flesh and Militarum Green, which is giving me a nice sickly green. I'm painting almost all of the armour panels with this, but I'm going to leave one knee pad and one shoulder pauldron blank for the moment, as I'll introduce a similar accent colour. Resist the temptation to play around with the paint once it's on the model, because it does dry quickly and we can cause tears, which on smooth surfaces like this will really stick out. 
Nasdra yellow will be the color for these accents, but you might prefer a bone, dark red, or black, which I think would also look really slick. Red contrast paints are a lot of fun to paint with, and it's absolutely no coincidence that I've selected the model with a big long cloak to be able to show it off. Death Guard have so much going on, so I'm picking out a couple of browns and darker colors for horns and growths. Is there a substitute for metallics in the contrast range? Let me know, because I couldn't think of any. I've elected to resort to what I know being Lead Belcher and Balthazar Gold again. Pushing around the flesh brown and pink colors again for the tentacles bursting through the armor panels as Nurgle refuses to be contained. This is what I should have attempted with one of my other models earlier in the video. Fire Slayer flesh thinned down a little with contrast medium and then washed across the metallics as a replacement for a standard wash. I like how this has turned out and I'm going to use it straight from the pot to paint into the damaged sections of the armor panels. I still want an orange rust weathering effect, so I'll thin down this magma droth flame and paint this sparingly into some of the damaged areas and also onto the plague knife. Bright blue for the plasma weapon and to have more white showing through, I just weaken the blue like I have been with some of the other colors. So it lands in the recess of the coils in the same way that an ink wash would. While it's on my wet palette, it only takes an extra couple of seconds per model to use this as a weathering for any gold or copper areas. The best part is that you can remove some steps if you don't like the look or can't allocate this much time to your own models. And you could even return to them down the line and add more detail. It will be easy to grab a couple of these models and decide to add some brighter layer paints to the cloaks or maybe some edge highlights to the armor. That's surely the biggest takeaway from a video like this. Paint what you enjoy and paint it in a way that makes you happy. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I painted Plague Marines today. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more, you guys know what to do. The channel has grown so much over the last year and I really enjoyed looking at all your contributions along the way. I need ideas for more videos. I'm working on something pretty special for October and I'm painting more and more of my Blood Angels. But if you have some more ideas for me, leave them down below because I guarantee you that I read them all. Thanks again and I'll see you on the next one. Blue his house with a blue little window and a blue Corvette and everything is blue for him and himself and everybody around because he ain't got nobody to listen to. He's blue da ba dee 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 da ba dee. Go to bed, Michael.